My daughter was 13 and she started showing signs of an eating disorder. We didn't know that's what it was at first. She'd been seeing a counselor for what she self-diagnosed as sort of OCD and anxiety. She, it started with her not being able to eat lunch at school and then we started seeing more restrictions at home. We didn't really know how dangerous her condition was, but we went on a family road trip and it was, it was terrifying. By the time we were in the Redwoods, she was eating almost nothing at all. Eventually we called the nurse line and we realized that, yeah, we were in the danger zone. We stopped our road trip early and we drove her all the way from California back to Seattle. We immediately brought her to Children's the next morning. Folks at Children's said she needs to be admitted because her heart rate is so low. She got brought up to the PBMU that evening and um, that's basically how we ended up here. Our PBMU is the Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine Unit. It's our inpatient psychiatry unit here. It's really focused on acute crisis stabilization. So kids come in for all different types of reasons to be admitted here in the hospital. And anorexia and other eating disorders uh, are a psychiatric illness that require intensive management, not only from a medical standpoint, but also from a behavioral and emotional standpoint. Eating disorders are a medical problem, uh, but they also have a big component of the mind in them. Uh, this disordered relationship between the patient and food is something uh, that really is rooted in a patient's psyche, um, in the patient's mind. She went directly to a medical bed in the PBMU because she needed the special monitoring that was available with that medical bed, but she also needed the full panoply of um, care that was available in the PBMU, so she, she needed that full program. We knew that she was getting the best care she possibly could get, sort of 24-7 and 360, everybody could really see everything that was going on with her, both medically and psychologically, um, for her recovery, and we could go home and rest at night. <laughs> and come back the next day. And, um, you know, those hours that we had at home were really restorative for us. Your child is in the hospital because they are ill. And the treatment actually is going to potentially make them sicker before it makes them better. We know this is an incredibly stressful time for patients and families as we start on this journey. We started her stay with her being absolutely irate with us. And she didn't even want to talk to us. She didn't even want to look at us for the first little while. When Annalise was at her sickest and we were trying to work with her to eat more and she was so angry with us, um, Obviously, that's really stressful, and it was stressful for us as parents, so it was a big relief when the care team said, you know, we'll take care of those messages, and, you know, we'll make sure that Annalise knows that she needs to eat, and that doesn't have to be something that you are telling her, because we've got your back, and we can deliver those messages. Yeah, that was a big help for our, I don't know, just for keeping our family working together as a team and reducing some of that adversarial feeling that Annalise had. Hearing the whole circle of the care team like reinforce the idea that, yes, you are in danger, you are really sick, like your parents were not crazy to bring you here. Like I, I think that was really important for her. Parents do need a whole lot of support at managing the stress that this can impose on them. Um, there are specifically um, parent support staff that uh, that's their role is to support the needs of the parent. So that can be things like scheduling meetings, 
um, like looking towards outpatient treatments and helping them set up the providers that are going to be indicated. Um, there's also a parent lounge on the unit where they can get away and get a little bit of a break and get to collect their thoughts a little bit on ways that they can be an effective uh, helper to their child while they're there. The most important thing for a parent to know about the PBMU is the idea that we are trying to support patients as they refeed. So the refeeding process um, is basically day by day. We're wanting to make sure we're giving the right amount of calories for that day um, and energy, and then working slowly up to a goal um, amount of calories in a day. So the refeeding process will start kind of small and meals will look small, and then every day it will get a little bit bigger um, based on portion sizes. Patients who've been starved for a long period of time, when they get fed, a lot of calories too quickly, um, it can really send their metabolism off in bad directions. Um, and it can even be life-threatening. So in mealtime, we have meal support, which is a really special aspect to the PPMU. So there will be a trained professional who will help your child gather their supplies for the meal and then work through the meal. So they'll be there to help cue, uh, to like to take a bite or to try a food that might be kind of challenging. The meat there that's on the side. We do tend to focus more on the heart rate than the weight because as the weight comes up, the patient's anxiety can come up. And so we try not to talk about weight. But the heart rate is exciting for patients because they know that there's a goal for their heart rate to reach a certain point, which tells us that their heart is stable enough for them to go home and to be treated as an outpatient. The refeeding process starts out very slowly and we found ourselves just day after day kind of waiting for her heartbeat to recover and you know, feeling really relieved every time it went up a beat. And it was really, really traumatically uncomfortable for her. I mean, physically uncomfortable. The refeeding process is really hard on the child, just physically. You know, her stomach hurt all the time. But she did it. Medicine is a team sport, and for teams to work together, they have to communicate. Uh, we will touch base with the psychiatrist every day. We round as a team every day with the whole medical team. We felt as if we had this, you know, large group of people who cared profoundly about us and about her. Every provider we talked to always asked us, whether we had any questions, and that was such a relief. Nobody was ever in a hurry, <laughs> and we could ask anything we wanted to know, which was wonderful because we had so many questions. In terms of the dietitians and the adolescent medicine doctors and the psychiatrists meeting together, we actually have a meeting twice a week where we review all of our eating disorder patient cases and discuss the challenges and the big wins that we've had for the week with these patients. Um, and design the plan of care to move forward. So that's one of the greatest benefits to being in the PPMU versus being on the medical floor, is that there's a lot of structure and scheduling um, for these patients when they're on the unit. So they have a routine, they wake up the same time every morning and have um, a getting ready for the day kind of routine. And then there's great classes. So we are encouraging them to do a little bit of light yoga, uh, meditation even. There is a school setting as well that's a separate group room where we have full-time teaching staff and the efforts really are trying to normalize that day and keep them up to schoolwork. A lot of children with eating disorders are very capable students, in fact highly perfectionistic students, so the thought of taking them away from that school setting that they do so well in can be anxiety provoking as well. The, the PPMU, it's two floors and everyone has their own room and then there's some, some neat common space area. We have a little outdoor area that you can just hang out in the grass, get some sunshine. I think it's actually very helpful for many families to write their questions down, because you always forget. Don't be afraid to ask, f f to advocate for your child in the PBMU. Um, everybody there really wants to help. 
I think the biggest thing to tell parents, um, especially when, if this is an early or new um, diagnosis, is that this is a, a lifetime um, therapy and, and treatment, and it takes takes a long time to be able to start um, tackling some of these thoughts and, and struggles, um, and that every day is a new day, that you can make improvement, um, and that it, we don't always have to focus on the numbers, too. Sometimes um, looking for success is just being able to take one more bite of meat, potentially, um, or being able to try a new food that they weren't able to try before, and not necessarily the number on the scale or the number of calories consumed in a day. I guess just that, I mean, I'd like to reassure any parents who are looking at an admission to the PBMU for a child with an eating disorder and, and feeling scared or horrified or like, what on earth is my kid doing in this locked ward and like, it'll be okay. Like that's where your child needs to be and that's where they will be getting the best care. And it may feel scary, but everybody there is just trying to keep your child safe and give them what they need. And that as a family, you'll come out of there with help and resources to help you recover from this. Eating disorder recovery is a, is a very long process. And so I can't say that she came out of the PBMU saying, I know that I need to eat to be healthy. Um, instead, I would say that she came out of the PBMU resigned to the fact that she needs to eat. It has been a pretty smooth recovery and she's a happy, healthy kid now. She still has anorexia, but she has a healthy body and she understands a lot of the things she needs to do to help keep herself safe and to make herself healthy.